excited to share with you some of our fantastic honorees who will be joining us at this year's 2021 She Rocks Awards, Thinking to the Future. Whoa. It's our ninth <laughs> annual She Rocks Awards this year. It'll be taking place on January 22nd, 2021, and we will be streaming it live via uh, parade.com and also Believe in Music TV, which is NAM special week long of programming, which you can check out at believeinmusic.tv. Uh, but without further ado, I would love to introduce you to the fantastic, talented, un unbelievable women we have here today. We have Lizzie Hale, who's going to be hosting our 2021 She Rocks Awards. Hey, Lizzie. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. This is exciting, and I've been looking forward to hosting this for a long time. It's just, it's such an honor to uh to be the host this year or next yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have the incredibly hilarious and talented Margaret Show. Hey Margaret. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. And her <laughs> and her little her little friend Lucia Caterina. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because dogs are people too. That's right. <laughs> yes. And then we have Sheree Curry. And uh, we had, Yay. Cherie was at the last She Rocks Awards helping us honor Susie Quattro. And this year, we are excited to honor her. Hi, Cherie. Yay. Thank you so much. I'm honored, yeah. truly honored. Awesome. Especially awesome with these great you. gals. <laughs> Fantastic. And then we have Jane Weedland from the Go Go's. Hi, Jane. This is my first time meeting you. And oh, I'm super hi, excited to, uh, to honor you guys. And know, of course, Kathy so Valentine. Excited. Also Yay. from the Go-Go's. So great to see you guys. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to start off by asking a couple of questions, and then we're going to take some questions um, from the media. And uh, we'll be sharing uh, just some thoughts and info about the She Rocks Award. So why don't I start off uh, just asking you, Lizzie, a question. Um, you were honored at the 2021 She Rocks Awards, and I wanted you to maybe share like a little bit about your experience and what you're looking forward to hosting this weirdly new and virtual She Rocks Awards this year. Um, I think that the most amazing thing about, and first of all, I'm, I'm incredibly flattered to have been honored at the last She Rocks Awards, but one of the biggest things I think that I took away from it was this this kind of afterglow that when I realized that right after I kind of walked off stage and and you know I, I got a big hug from Susie Quattro and and you realize that everybody in the audience has been through everything that you've been through as a woman and in in the industry and and it's those subtle things those things that you push away those things that you like you deal with because oh. you have to deal with it and i realized i had never really been to an award ceremony like that where i could feel that not only from the audience but just from my you know my fellow ladies standing around me and um it was a really it was a powerful experience for me and it made me realize how important it is for the women who have carved out their own path and and pushed themselves forward and didn't quit because people said what this or that. Um, it's so important for for younger girls to see that and to identify with, you know, whether it's one of us or, or any number of women. Um, and so I, I thought that was a really powerful thing to to learn. I, I had never mm. experienced that in, in, at any other award ceremony. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I, I do hear from many people that it is inspiring to hear other people sharing your experiences or your triumphs, your hardships, whatever it is, and knowing that you found a way, you know, to keep going. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, I wanted to ask everybody on the panel, um, you know, what, why do you think it's important to have an event like the She Rocks Awards? Uh, that shines a spotlight on female role models. And, you know, maybe you can share a little bit about your thoughts on that and what you're looking forward to uh, being part of the She Rocks Award. So Sheree, why don't we start with you? <laughs> well, first of all, I was so impressed with your award show um, when I gave Susie her, her award. I mean, you guys just pulled off a top-notch, wonderful, wonderful evening. 
Uh, and that was the first time I'd ever been to the She Rocks Awards. And I really saw how important it was. I'd heard a lot about it. But um, for me, of course, being in the Runaways, you know, the only per person that we really had was Susie Quattro. Uh, I heard a little bit about Fanny, but, um, you know, we, we didn't really have girl rockers. So mm -hmm. to see this is just, it makes me feel real old. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because so much has happened in the last 50 years, you know, a lot. Good stuff. <laughs> For women, absolutely. You know, because, you know, when, you know, like Kathy and Jane and I, when, when we started, I mean, there just really weren't girls. They're just weren't girl bands. So um, to just see all these amazingly talented young people um, that, you know, look up to all of us girls and, you know, and to see that things really have gotten a lot better than they were in the 70s. That's for sure. 1975 was, 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 was tough uh, for, for us girls. But um, to me, I just think that uh, we've come a long way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you think, Jane, about this thought about shining a spotlight on female role models and what we're doing with an event like this? Well, I think it's super important that we uh, lift up and elevate other women musicians because I don't know that anyone else is going to. And I mean, I've been saying since the 80s, like, why isn't it like a 50 50 split between men rockers and women rockers because well actually we're more than 50 percent of the population so i always felt like why aren't we represented and um i still feel like we have a really long way to go but i think acknowledging and um sharing and supporting other women musicians is so important and that's why she rocks rocks <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hey, we got Cindy Blackman Santana. She hi, just joined Cindy. us. Hey, Cindy. Hi, hi, hi. I'm having some I was like, what? issues today. So if I pop out, believe me, I'll be working uh, effort, uh, hardly hard to, to try to get back on. So if it happens, again, <laughs> okay. I'll be Well, while you're here, I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> um, okay. um, Cindy, why do you think it's important for us to have an event like the She Rocks Awards and that shines a spotlight on female role models? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, absolutely. Um, I like the last comments and I totally agree. And I, you know, I think that um, music is like prayer and everyone prays, you know, it doesn't matter whether your spirit is male or female because God hears everybody. So why not equalize that and have everybody represented, you know, so, um, I love events like this because they equalize the playing field in terms of, um, you know, sharing all the energies, recognizing all the energies that everyone's putting out and putting into the music, you know, all the, the energy that, that people are offering. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's only fair uh, because if you're, if you're uh, making music, you're presenting music, um, and you're inspiring others to, to, to do the same, to me, you should be recognized. And, and that does not, in my opinion, have anything to do with gender. It's just fairness of equality. It shouldn't have anything to do with race, with culture, with gender, you know, with whatever your religious beliefs are. You know, it's just the fairness and representation. And we're all children of God, so why not represent us all? So I think it's great to shine light on, on you know, a portion of this industry and this experience that hasn't gotten, you know, as much light um, in many of the areas as I think it deserves. Yeah, yeah, thank you. How about you, Margaret? Do you have any thoughts on what we're doing here? I think it's so important because as women artists, we have to be twice as talented and work twice as hard to get less than half of the credit. I mean, probably a quarter of the credit, you know, and it's it's really unfortunate, but that's the truth of this industry, entertainment in general, and the world in general. And I think rock and roll 
is the art of the outsider and there's no um, bigger outsider than women. You know, there's a Korean word for um, wife and it's ane and it means, it doesn't mean wife, it just means inside. And it's like mm -hmm. the person that's inside and I just wanna break out, I wanna break out of that. So rock and roll has been deeply important to me. Um, and so this is an, an appropriate and perfect thing to do while we're all inside. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? How about yeah. you, Kathy? What do you have any thoughts about um, shining a spotlight on female role models? Well, I mean, being the last person to talk, probably <laughs> everyone has said a lot of what I would say, but just to kind of hit it home a little further, yes, I agree with uh, Lizzie. There's an amazing strength and, and feeling that kind of bond I mean, there's only, only, only we know what it feels like, you know, and it's, it's, I'm just a big believer from the minute I joined the Go-Go's, I was so drawn to the idea of sisterhood. And as that just gets bigger and more kind of spread apart, whether and, and across all realms, I just think there's so much power in femininity and women and not, fem, not being feminine, but that feminine energy. And I just think it's the way of the future. I think it's really strong and I think it's really powerful. And I think that we put up with a lot of stuff about how we're supposed to look and how we're supposed to age and what we're supposed to do and how long we're supposed to do it for and how we're yes. supposed to look when we do it. And I don't think, I think rock and roll is the perfect um, realm to kind of bust that shit wide open and say, no, mm -hmm. we don't have those rules. We don't have those boundaries. Yeah. Yes. Hell yeah. I love that. <laughs> See, last, but still awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I have like a switch. Just turn it on, turn it off. <laughs> well, you know, my thought when I started the She Rocks Awards was, uh, you know, I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of women in the industry. And when women don't see themselves in roles, they don't see the possibility of doing those things. You know, it's like that in everything, politics, business. Um, so from my perspective, you know, sharing with people, others inspiring stories helps, you know, the next generation, everyone say, hey, you know, I could do that. Like, whoa, the light bulb goes off, you know? So I, th I find that um, truly important uh, for- Well, for you're a superstar. Built. You're a superstar. <laughs> Thank you for everything you're doing for us girls. Thank you. Thank you. It's, yeah. It's been a crazy ride. Um, I do want to uh, maybe talk a little bit more about inspiring the next generation. And do any of you have any thoughts about that? Or have you had any stories of perhaps like young fans that um, you have met or spoken with that you know of you've inspired to, you know, go further, take to, for them to follow in your footsteps or, you know, have, create a career in the music industry? And I'm wondering, maybe Cindy, maybe you can start with us because as a drummer, like I feel like that's probably fairly rare in the world. A, you know, kick-ass female drummer out there doing her thing. What do you think? Well, um, firstly, I, you know, it, it has been rare, but I'm really happy to say that I'm seeing more and more young women playing drums, you know, and I, and I think that's incredible because, you know, it's an outlet that women love too. So why can't we do it? You know, um, I've met several uh, young young musicians, young drummers, young guitar players, er everything, and you know, um, it really means a lot when when they say, you know, and because you know we're not. I think if I could speak for 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 everybody, and I think I can because everybody is is on this panel is is just a a, a great musician, you know, in their own right, um, and we're not thinking of oh, I want to inspire. We're making music to inspire, but are we focusing on inspiring a young girl or whatever? Not really. You know, we're making music, and to me, that's the 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 first thing is the creative process and getting that out. And then, if it does inspire, from my perspective, I'm really proud and I'm really happy. You know, and so I've definitely met some some young women who um, uh, have said that they they've been inspired. You know, by by what they've seen me and, and, and others do. Um, there was a really young little girl who I met in uh, Melbourne and she wanted to be a guitar player. She was a teeny little thing and she brought her guitar <laughs> 
uh, during the day I was doing a drum clinic. And so she brought her little guitar. She couldn't have been more than four years old. And she told me that uh, by watching, she wanted to play an instrument, but it wasn't the drums, it was the guitar. And I said, well, that's great. And, and uh, she wanted to ask a question and she was so little. I said, well, would you like to come up on stage and ask? And she went, okay. And so her <laughs> biggest question to me had nothing to do with the drums or, or the music. Her biggest question was, what's your favorite animal? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that little girl it was so cute. Um, but yeah, you know, a lot, lot of young young people and it's and it's really re-inspiring to me because then I want to push harder, do more and be better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you, Kathy? I'm not going to wait to the end this time. Like, <laughs> have you had an experience um, with with younger? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be young, any fan that has come up and been inspired yeah. or... Well, I have to say, you know, from from my my perspective as a go go, it's been the most rewarding part of what we accomplished in my career as a musician has been people saying that they either our music or uh, just the 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 idea of it kind of gave them possibility, and of course, uh, you know, I love. Like every time we play and I see like a young girl in the front, I always make sure she gets the guitar pick. Um, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it, I do want to see more women in bands. I see more women musicians and that's fantastic. That's very different. Like Sharia was saying when we started out, I see fantastic women musicians all over the place, but I still don't see the bands in the Pantheon, like at the top with long sustained careers that have, you know, and I don't know why, because it's like, it's such a great, wonderful way to kind of go through life. You know, you learn so much about relationships and and dealing with people and dealing with the problems of life. Being in a band is like this little microcosm of a society. And if you can maneuver it and do it, you know, I think it makes you a better citizen. I know that sounds really weird, but I really think <laughs> it does. <laughs> It's definitely um, yeah, its so own I unique love, kind of education. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little democracy. Um, yeah. and sometimes works better than the one we have and sometimes doesn't. But um, <laughs> yeah, I love I love having um, that inspire and um, we I've been so surprised hearing from like country guys, like guys that are country guy players saying, oh yeah, my Go-Go's poster was on my wall or hip hop uh, people or people that I never thought would be inspired has just been like mind blowing. And in turn, I get inspired. I mean, when I see Cherie still making music, when I see what Jane does outside of the band, when I see Margaret like, like just, just like knocking down barriers. When I, when I met Lizzie, I was blown away uh, by her, just, she's a phenomenal performer across the board. And Cindy, I've just kind of worshiped from afar for many, many years. So it's, it's not only, yeah. it's, it's not only like uh, inspiring others, but we get inspired by them too. And that little girl, that Nandy, uh, the, the little drummer that's oh 10 years God. old, so I mean, awesome. she inspires oh me so much. I'm like, where does she get? I want that enthusiasm and that I want <laughs> that, you know, because we can get like, eh, all like, I've eh, been there, done that. And then you see someone fresh coming and that's just like, just filled with wonder and enthusiasm and passion. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's, I've got that still. I'll take that box off the shelf. I mean, I, I sort of feel like that's what we're aiming for, right? Here's this young girl. She doesn't feel barriers. You know, she's just, you know, going for it. And she re inspires us. Yeah. 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 I mean, we, and we and, know and that, the hands too. We know that the music will continue with people who really want to hone in and learn an instrument instead of just pressing buttons. And to me, yeah. that's really, really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Margaret, I wanted to ask you because like your career is a little different than some, maybe some of the other people here in our Zoom room. Um, what's been your interaction with um, fans or people that look to you as a role model? It's been really exciting because I think that for me, a lot of people take that thing of um, if you can't see it, you can't be it. And so I've been able to inspire um, people like Ali Wong and Aqu Aquafina. Um, and I've collaborated with Aquafina too. Like it's it's really important to be able to be a presence out there for other 
people to see and say, I could do that too, even though I don't necessarily see anybody else like me, but when they do, it's so exciting. Um, I got that same feeling when I, my, my very first concert was the Go-Go's at the Greek theater for the vacation tour. And it was really life-changing. And I remember it was probably the first time that I'd been, I, I mean, it was the first concert, but it was the first time I'd been with that many other young girls and women who were all realizing this is a game changer. This is, this is something that we can do. And they were such an inspiration. And, you know, it's really exciting. We're heading into an exciting time. We have a female vice president, our very first biracial female <laughs> vice president, which is so incredible. And so this is a great time to be a woman. Yeah, yeah. Jane, did you know that Margaret was at that, that show? Yeah. <laughs> I told Kathy, I also saw Jane with, um, for the uh, Sparks tour with, uh, when she was saying cool places with them at the Kabuki Theater in San Francisco. That was like early 80s too. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, does anybody else, I, I know Lizzie, like I've seen you play and like there's literally like lines of people waiting to say hello to you and, and lots of young girls. Um, it's it's such a beautiful thing um to be a, a woman in 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 music and 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 in rock music in particular but um i remember it, like like some of you had said before like you don't you don't set out to be you know Cindy you said this beautifully you don't set out to be a role model you set out because you just you you feel that physicality to your instrument and you it's almost like the music chooses you. You don't necessarily choose it. And um, so when I first started getting into music, um, I was listening to a lot of my dad's music. So it was a lot of Alice Cooper and Black Sabbath and all of that. And it was my mom who, uh, it was like shortly after we started the band, I think it was about 14. And, um, and my mom got me all these greatest hits of like all of these female powerhouses, which was actually including <laughs> the, the Go Go's and the Runaways and and Hart and Pat Benatar and Janis Joplin, and I remember that being a huge game changer for me because all of a sudden you realize that up until then I had been like emulating rock because I just liked the attitude. I didn't really didn't have a, a vast awareness of the trials that maybe I was going to be hurtling <laughs> you know um in the industry but by listening to these women it, it it made that that bridge to hope just a little shorter because it's almost like you look at these girls and you're like well like what you guys were saying like i'm represented well she's a girl i'm a girl too she's rocking so therefore there is a path and i want to actually take a second to thank all of you here for carving out that path, not just for me, but for so many young women, because it's hard to do it on your own. Like, you know, the, you guys have, you you were beaten through the brush to make that path so that we could have, you know, a, a guide to go through. Um, and uh, I don't, I, and as in passing it forward, I do remember this one particular story um this girl i still keep in touch with her her name is ally blacksmith and uh, she's a little guitar player girl so she came to see her first hailstorm show when she was 10 and light bulb went off she wanted to be a guitar player um fast forward three years later she came she comes to a show she meets me by the side of the bus hands me a letter um she also sent me a bunch of links she can play eruption by eddie van halen it's she's an amazing little guitar player um but she sent she wrote me this letter that explained her being at in the front row at the rock show with her mom and what that this weight that got lifted from her where she you know she all of a sudden she knew what she wanted to do in life and so passing that forward when we made our this was uh like 10 years ago when we were still on our first record so when we made our second record i took her letter into one of our writing sessions and i'm like we have to write a song for this girl so we wrote this song called rock show and just literally depicting everything that she was describing in her letter and then we ended up in just in the liner notes dedicating that song to her and and to this day now she's a, a grown adult and um and she's doing her thing but she still keeps in touch with me and it's it's amazing 
I'm so humbled to even have the chance to hold that flag for someone, you know, because it's just, I know what it meant to me. And so just to keep passing that torch is, uh, is a beautiful thing to be a part of. Mm, Thank you. Yeah. I got, I literally got a chill when you were, (laughs) when you were Uh just telling that story. Um, Jane, do you have any other thoughts about, I mean, you guys have probably inspired everybody else in this room and many, many thousands more people to pick up a guitar, play music. Do you have any particular well, thoughts? Um, yeah, I guess I'll just continue on what Kathy said because she was right about the Go-Go's and that is um, in the more recent decades of us in our 42 year career, we've seen the girls that saw us in the eighties grow up, have their own daughters and bring their daughters to the show Mm -hmm. and to watch the looks on those girls' faces when they get what's going on. And it's like, they are flabbergasted because they don't really have an opportunity in their regular life, listening to the radio or looking on TV of seeing uh, female musicians really. And when they do, I mean, really, you can see us blowing their minds. And it's just, none of us have ever gotten sick of that, seeing that kind of face in the audience. So it really is thrilling. Um, But the other thing I would say is um, after we kind of broke the glass ceiling, we just assumed that there would instantly be like a gazillion all-girl bands. And it didn't really happen. But in the 90s, Um, There were, I mean, 90s is kind of my favorite decade of music because there were so many great female musicians playing rock and um, a lot of them have acknowledged us. And and to me, that is like the biggest honor because I'm a fan of them. Like, you know, bands like Veruca Salt and um, like Hole and The Breeders and Belly and these bands that really were inspired by the Go-Go's because they were girls when they saw us. Um, That just means everything to me. Yeah, that's awesome. Cherie, I wanted to um, invite you into this conversation too, because I'm sure there's been, you know, thousands of women, young and old, inspired by you. And I also think it's so interesting because you have been able to, I guess, I don't even want to say reinvent, but progress in a way where, you know, you're still making amazing music, you're still breaking barriers. And um maybe thoughts about that as well as like all those people that you inspire i'm so lucky because um my album boulevards of splendor which was shelved for almost 10 years uh just came out and it's the best it's the best thing i've ever been a part of uh, with matt sorum and um you know producing and it really really brody doll as well she she's on on it and the veronica's great Ah. great girls and uh, and also with the Runaways movie that came out in yeah. 2010 really opened a lot of young girls' eyes to what the Runaways were about as well. Because again, we started in, in 75, uh, the Runaways. So um, I will say the one great, one great thing that's come out of COVID for me is, is I also got into Cameo. And these wonderful young women musicians would ask me for a cameo and then I would ask to hear their music and they would say Mm -hmm. and I liked it so much I've I've done like three videos now with these with these girls uh different girls and because I can you know it's time to share right now at this particular time I mean um I, I I never would have been able to do these videos and sing on their records like I have just in the last you know eight months so um but being a chainsaw carver too, that 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 is pretty rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, pretty badass. <laughs> Nobody's gonna mess with you, Sheree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting because we've gotten a few questions from the media, and a couple of them are asking about, you know, you know, we we talk about inspiring uh, girls and young women, but also, you know, people people of an, another decade, older women, like th- there is ageism definitely in this industry, but I do feel like, you know, all of us here are still like creating and doing significant pieces of work. And 
moving forward and what we do. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about, you know, how do people who sort of feel like, is it too late for them? Did they get left behind? Like, well, how do we navigate working in music, you know, in our forties, our fifties, our sixties? Um, does anybody want to volunteer any thoughts on that, Kathy? Well, <laughs> I want to talk about that because I recently did a master class and, uh, there were so many women who were in their fifties that had just started playing. And um, one of my messages I like to say is it's never too late. I mean, like it's an old, it's, I'm not the first person to say this, but a year or two is gonna go by anyway. So why not be, you know, a better musician than you are? And in a year you can come so far. I mean, I promise anybody, and that's what I always try, it's just never too late. And, you know, you, you it's just when you just sit down and just start practicing and doing it and music is so good for you. It's so good for your brain. It's so good for your soul. It's such a good therapy and who never, who doesn't need that at any age. Um, and, you know, maybe being a, a, a big famous rock star isn't in the, the books for everybody, but for most of us, you know, just sitting in a rehearsal room or sitting at home, writing a song or doing something takes you out of the crazy for a little bit and that's a really valuable and and just as as valid as you know making it or whatever so it, it was really really uh inspiring to see and i really like uh the go-go's as part of our ongoing message you know we, we're not the most active band in the world but i do feel like we put a strong message out as do i think all of the the women here that are not and you know considered young and, and in their prime or whatever that um you know you don't have to stop you, you just keep going and you keep reinventing and you keep challenging yourself and um creating i mean being mm -hmm. being creative is it's just magical and it's healthy and it's good for the soul it's good for the heart it's good for the brain um so yeah but that's mainly what i wanted to say was seeing how many women were just just getting started uh, yeah thanks kathy oh and one more thing when i when i first started playing uh i think the one of the reasons i wanted to play with women was i wasn't sure men would want to play with me you know it was <laughs> it was back when like Sher sheree's talking about it was 1975 and mm -hmm. all the guys were these you know really good musicians and i thought why why are they going to want me in their band but i thought but maybe i can find other girls my age that'll want to do it and play with me so i think that's happening also with older women i think they're finding other moms and like other like people that their age that want to rock out with them so it's pretty cool yeah thanks does anybody else have any thoughts on this topic i think it's so important because i think being in this time of life we have the most to offer and really right now it's like make way for the crone I'm so into the crown, like I'm living the crown realness and the lifestyle and I love it. And I feel like as artists, we have the most to give because we've lived the hardest and the best. So I think it's really great. Yeah, I think too, it's like, you're right. You don't care as much, right? It's like, okay, maybe everybody doesn't have to love me, but yeah. some people will. And I'm just going to do the thing that makes me happy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I also feel like there used to be these constructs in the industry, label constructs or ideas that there may still be there, but they're not really valid anymore because you can do so many things on your own or with other groups that people don't care if you're, if you're not 20. Um, not, not that there's like, not that there's anything wrong with being 20, but, <laughs> but I'm with you. <laughs> uh, music is like chess. You know, you can play it your entire life, which is one of, to me, one of the one of the most beautiful things about music. And there are a lot of sides to it. You know, there's a professional side. There's, you know, um, uh, just a fun side. You know, so I, and I and I agree with Kathy. It's just completely healthy for you mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. You know, so it's a great thing to get involved in. But then we also have to remember there are people who are, you know, innovators and great people like John Coltrane, who didn't blossom until he was 32, you know? So it's mm -hmm. definitely something that we can do all of our lives. And, and, and that I think is one of God's gifts to mankind, humankind, womankind, all of us. 
Yeah, yeah. I think one of the funny things about music is it is such a primordial thing and it has been in humanity forever, right? And it's something that unifies us. It's something that soothes our soul. And as writers and performers, I find that I feel like I'm my most authentic self when I'm writing and I feel completely out of all the tape messages in my head. They just disappear when I'm making music. And like, how important is that? It's like this crazy cure-all drug that you take, except, you know, <laughs> legal um, or whatever. <laughs> um, but um, one thing I was thinking is about how women are, not only do we have to fight because of our gender, and for a lot of women also their sexual preference, but the ageism in the music business is so fucking out of control. And I was thinking about how in the 90s, I formed a band, I was, like I said, super inspired by 90s music, and I got an amazing producer, and I found an a and guy at a major label that totally believed in me. And they, that label refused to push my record, which I am still so proud of, and I'm very hard on my records, I'm very critical, because I was 39, and they were like, 39 is too old. 39, can you imagine them saying that to a male musician? So I just feel like, I don't know, people don't realize like how tough of a warrior you have to be in this business to believe in yourself when nobody else does. It's just so important. Mm. Yeah. That freaks me out, 39. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get started until I was after 39. So there you go. <laughs> well, um, I'm just going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll be sharing some links. Uh, I know some of the... Um, some of the media wants to know uh, if you guys are doing any workshops or teaching, we'll share some links. We'll reach out to you guys if uh, you have um, links that you want us to share with the media for um, projects that you have going on that people can interact with you. But I did wanna ask, um, are there any projects that you want the world to know about that are new or coming up? Um, Cindy, why don't you start? Cause I know you have something. Oh, Maybe. thank you, yes. Um, my newest record, my latest record is called Give the Drummer Some, and it came out on September 18th. It's available on uh, all the streaming platforms, vinyl, CD, everything. So, uh, and I'm really uh, happy with this record. It's my uh, debut with, with singing. Um, so forgive me, yeah, but <laughs> made it go for it. <laughs> She's laughing, I, I don't blame you, Lizzie. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a, a, another way to express. So I was really happy to, to, to do that and, and to get this, this record out with some really great messages, you know, that are really relevant in this timeline. You know, we did a cover of Imagine, you know, which is just a, a, a timeless message that unfortunately is still very relevant and very needed. But fortunately we have it, you know, so we did a cover of that. Um, another song is, uh, Changes in Your Hands, um, Evolution, Revolution, um, uh, Social Justice. And these are, you know, the message songs. And then there are other songs that are just for the creativity of it and the fun of it, like uh, Fun Party Splash and She's Got It Going On. And I'm, I'm really proud that it features some really great musicians. Um, my husband is on it, Carlos Santana, John McLaughlin's on it. Guitar heavy, you guys know I, I, I love guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Vernon Reed is on it. Um, Kurt Hammond is on it. And, and, you know, cast of some other really greats. So thank you for asking about the record. And, you know, uh, maybe next time we can, some of these uh, panel members, maybe we can get together and do something. I think that would be fun. Yeah, I can't wait that would be fun. Be awesome. How I was about thinking you, Chris? this would be a really cool band right here. That's like, I've just been eyeing this one. <laughs> Such a I cool like band. this band. Yes. I like this band. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll work on that for 2022. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Um, Margaret, what have you been working on? Do you have anything uh, you want to share? Um, I have a movie that's out on Netflix now called Over the Moon, which is the first Asian American animated feature that's 
an all Asian Asian American cast. Um, so it's that's really exciting. It's with Sandra Oh and Ken Jeong and John Cho and lots of great people. And I also have a podcast with uh, with Sheree and Kathy have been on. I have to get everybody else on too. Um, it's called the Margaret Cho and it's out on Erios, which is a um, all female podcasting network. Oh, cool! Wow, we will definitely check that out. We'll we'll, we'll share some links with that too. Um, what about you, Jane? What is your what have you been doing? Um, well, the Go-Go's have a, a documentary that came out a couple months ago on Showtime, which we're super proud of. Um, it's got nominated for three Critics' Choice Awards, which is mind blowing. And um, we actually wrote a new song for it called Club Zero that we're super proud of. That is is all about um, women being strong and standing up and you know fighting the patriarchy. And so we're super proud of that. And then outside of the Go-Go's, um, my other band, Electro Domestico, we made a single right before the pandemic hit and we were ready to go on tour. And I bought all the merchandise for the merch stand and then the, <laughs> the tour got canceled and the, the record didn't come up. So anyways, I'm hopeful that someday that's all gonna happen again. And it, can they get your merch at least online? Can we send them there? Um, uh, Not yet? <laughs> uh, I don't have the energy to do it right now. <laughs> All right, we'll save that one for another chat. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Kathy? I know you've had some projects going on. Uh, yeah, but between pandemic and my book, All I Ever Wanted, um, I've had this pen, I've been really busy in opportunities. Uh, and I have never really, I've always positioned myself as just being kind of a person in a cool band. And so it's been really fun and exciting and challenging to be kind of Kathy Valentine for the first time in my career, which is another, you know, I'm 61 and I'm like, like we were saying before, like, I don't really care whether people dig it or not. I just want to do it. And I want to be me for a while. And it's been really fun. And it's like, Every one thing you do, like activity just seems to keep breeding activity. Like I'll do one thing mm -hmm. and at least do another. So I've had a lot of fun with that and doing all kinds of things. And I'm going to release, I did a version of the Go-Go song Beneath the Blue Sky with my daughter. And uh, I'm super excited to really release that probably next week. And I've been learning video editing, which has been super fun and mm -hmm. obsessive. And I just kind of tweak out on videos editing all the time. <laughs> How old, is your, how old is your daughter, Kathy? She just turned 18. Wow. Yeah. And, um, oh, and then the Go-Go's have some really cool things coming up. So excited about, um, there's going to be a video for our single Club Zero that's going to be released and um, a reissue of one of my very favorite records that we ever did. I hope this isn't a secret. Did I just blow it? I hope not. If I did, too bad. But one of our very <laughs> favorite, one of our best records um they're gonna reissue and it was kind of got lost in 9 11 it came out like at a really bad time and we're so proud of it and it's god bless the go-go so i hope i didn't blow it i probably awesome did. whatever uh, jane, jane will cover it for me first <laughs> yeah there you go it's breaking news yeah. and uh <laughs> i'm really just like liking the connection there's a lot for some reason and pandemic and zooming and there's just more connecting going on than i ever felt in real life and uh hmm. Like reaching, like Sheree and I have had so many opportunities to kind of do stuff. And Lizzie and I got to do something. I got to do Margaret's podcast. And uh, there's just a lot of communication going on that normally wasn't there. And I'm kind of liking it, except for the pervading fear that's always, you know, COVID fear and the insanity. But otherwise, it's been a really fruitful, productive, and connective period and really kind of sinking down into home and life and being really learning to be happy with what I have, which has been a really nice yeah. thing. Awesome. What about you, Sheree? I know you've been doing, I've seen releases and different projects. Yeah. Well, Come, with, yeah, Boule you. Boulevards of Splendor came out right yeah. when the pandemic hit. Um, and that's, it's, it's just such a great rock record. I'm never going to make a record this good ever, ever again. But I also have my audio book that just came out, Neon Angel. That was tough. Um, 
to do uh, 15 hours of that. But I've got like, uh, I've, I've already had put out three videos so far during this pandemic, and I have another three coming out. All so right. I've been staying busy. But I've got that that cigar store Indian still sitting out there that I can't carve because everybody's home. So I have to, I have to just, you know, put on 10 pounds because I can't go out and carve, you know. So I'm looking forward to us getting some some, you know, of our lives back. Go back yeah. out on tour. Yeah. That I'm really praying for that. Right. Right. And last but definitely not least, Lizzie, you've not, I know you've had nothing to do this whole time and there's yeah, nothing, absolutely. nothing going on for you, but. Um, you know, this has been an interesting time. Um, like I was kind of saying, I think I was saying this off, off camera when we first all were getting on. Um, but it's been, uh, it's, I've been in this band for, for my band Hailstorm for 23 years. And, um, you know, it's, I, I, pretty sure it's been over 20 or 21 years since uh since i've gone this long without a gig without a live show and it's it was probably 90 percent of who uh, not just career wise whatever it's like it, it this is music had has always been so much more than a career choice the fact that it became a career it still blows my mind i'm been very lucky but um to to have to look at myself in the mirror in a different way and ask myself who I am without all of that. Who am I without the live show? Who am I without touring 250 dates a year? Who am I without being with my bandmates living two feet from each other all the time? Who am I without my crew? Um, who am I without a foreseeable plan? You know, for because it's just, there's always something, you know, coming up and something to get excited about. And so, um, at first, when all of this hit, I went through kind of a roller coaster of of just uncertainty and kind of being really bummed about it. And um, and then I just started saying yes to adventure, and uh, and I've gotten all of these opportunities. I've I've you know, hosted some shows, and I I have a show right now on Access TV called A Year in Music, and um, I, my hosting my TV hosting debut, which I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And uh, like right before the first taping, I'm like, what if I'm horrible at this? What, what? I already signed the contracts. Like I'm already in it. Um, but then like I learned a lot about it and, and I found something in me to do that. And um, now I have a, I have a show. Uh, I, I'm not sure when they're releasing it, but we're filming it in December um, with Alice Cooper and Gavin Rosdale and Bishop Briggs and, um, and, uh, uh, Tosin Abasi and, and, uh, it's called no cover. And so it's basically kind of like the voice, but, uh, but for unsigned original bands. And, mm -hmm. um, and so that's cool too, but uh, like, like you guys were just saying, like you say yes to one thing and it's kind of this domino effect. And I've mm -hmm. learned a lot about myself and who I am outside of what I've built, you know? And, um, and it's been such a, freeing and, and beautiful process and learning curve to go through. And I don't think that I would have gotten that opportunity to do that if it weren't for um, all of this crazy craziness in the world. So I'm trying to think of that in a, with a silver lining, but I think that the, the biggest thing and, and this connection, I mean, I've, I've met so many of you um, like Kathy, I can't wait to embrace you at some point you know because like we've met like through all of this and this whole year and I've met so many amazing friends and um had so many amazing connections just for no other reason than just for hu human connection and moving it all forward and I think I've really learned uh, n something that I've known all along but it's just music is primal and music doesn't care what gender you are what age you are who you like to kiss, you know, at what you do for a living. It, it doesn't care We're we're all the same to music. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that we come out on the other side, just as better humans and kind of put away all those stupid, petty differences that have <laughs> like just still here. Um, let's evolve. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, in, in, as far as looking forward to new things, as far as hailstorm goes, um, we're recording another record. So by uh, by the end of all this, we'll be kicking out some new music, and I'm excited about that. Yeah, awesome. Start with the awesome. ramble. 
That's okay. That's all good. I'm going to wrap up with just some, uh, a little bit more info for the media that's watching. Um, she Rocks Awards will be live January 22nd, 2021. Um, we'll be kicking it off a little early around 6 p.m. Pacific time with a pre-show um, with our opening act, Magnolia Boulevard, hosted by Lindsay Parker from uh, Yahoo Entertainment. So uh, she was our host of the She Rocks, she Rocks Awards last year. She's going to be hosting the pre-show. Um, we'll be live at 6.30 for the She Rocks Awards. We'll be sharing links on our site, sherocksawards.com, but you can register to see it at Believe in Music. TV. It's free. Um, we'll also be uh, sharing it on parade.com and we'll have some specific links coming up for that soon. Um, we also created a VIP experience that we're selling uh, a ticket for. Um, our gift bags at the She Rocks Awards have been so legendary that we like took that idea, put it into a box and we'll ship it out to you um, and give you a code to join us post show in a cool Zoom window just like this. Um, where we will be um, chatting and having fun and recapping what just happened. Um, we are also uh, excited to thank our sponsors. Uh, Positive Grid is our headline sponsor this year, and they've really invested in women in music, and I'm just so thrilled to, um, to have them on board. Um, I also want to thank Sweetwater, uh, PRS Guitars, Roland Marshall Amplification, Reverb, Personas, Nam, who is also the host of the Believe in Music Week, um, Fishman, Didario, Rig, Berkeley Online, Cuccio, Mac Cosmetics, because we need that, uh, Cliff <laughs> Bars, <laughs> uh, Parade Magazine, who's going to be, as I mentioned, hosting us uh, for the, the stream, and Future Publishing's magazines, who are awesome at helping us get the word out, including Guitar World, Music Radar, and other publications and also Guitar Girl Magazine. I should also mention our other honorees. And if I was smart, I would have written them all down. Um, and if somebody would uh, dump them in my chat, I would love that information. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, I, I am excited to also, besides these fantastic women here today, um, we'll be honoring Star Parodi, a dear friend of mine who uh, started out on the Arsenio Hall show. Um, as a, the keyboard, the female keyboard player, and uh, has gone on to do uh, tons of work in film and TV. Um, Anne Mincelli, who runs the studio, works with uh, Leash Keys. Uh, I think it's called Jungle something, Jungle City, Jungle. <laughs> Sorry, I forget the name of her studio, but she's done like a ton of great work, um, works on She is a Music Foundation. Um, Sharon Hennessy from the Music People, who is the um, runs this great organization. They um, have products like onstage stands, and they've been a supporter of ours for years. Um, we've got Gwen Riley, uh, who is oh yeah, Jungle City. See, I was right. Uh, Gwen Riley, who is a uh, head of music for Peloton. So, you know, that's making me think I do need to exercise because I've been home for months. <laughs> <laughs> but um, she's so great and enthusiastic. And also Amy Lee from Evanescence. We can't forget her. Um, I've been inspired by her. I've interviewed her in the past and we're very excited to honor her uh, this year at the She Rocks Awards. And uh, maybe a few surprises too, because you know me, if you, if you do know me, and I don't know if I even introduced myself, Laura Whitmore, founder <laughs> of the Women's International Music Network and the She Rocks Awards. Um, anyway, I like to surprise, I like surprises. So thanks everyone so much for joining us today. And uh, our fabulous publicists will be sharing all kinds of more info and please go to sherocksawards.com to find out more. Thank you, Lizzie, Margaret, Cherie, Jane, Kathy, and Cindy. Appreciate I, it so much. I love you all. Thank Yay, you. girls. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yay. All right, guys. Thank Bye. you. Thank you so much. Bye. See you in January. Good day, everybody. Yeah, we're doing yeah it. see you in January. Yeah. See you in Jesus. January. And more. <laughs> Have Bye. a great one, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you.